which is cedar. Stay tuned. So for my first part of this mission, I'm going to have to figure out a way to cut back this off the fence without totally destroying it. It is rose bush intertwined with some bougainvillea. Got my uh, Corona snippers, some gloves, long sleeves, because it's kind of, now bougainvillea is not really thorny, but the rose is mixed in. So that's what I got to do first. All right, now I've got this thing cut off the fence. I'm going to throw this tarp over it and hopefully not destroy it. And to top it off, I'm just going to put a little bit of weight on it here. If I hear any snapping, I will stop. Well, it gives me a little bit of access. Step three. All right, I'm just going to grab all the tools I need. Need my sawzall, a demo blade or something to cut the wood. Screw guns. Gonna need a grinder. I know this already because I already did the other side. And gonna need roto drill when we get to the hooking up the uh, Tapcom bolts to hold the frame. I think that's it. That's a good start. Yeah, good start. Okay, first things first, and that is the demolition of the old pine fence. Section one, complete. Section two. 
action too. Here we go. Okay, now I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna cut these bolts off. And I will admit with some tools, I use greater safety measures than others. And this is one of them. So, got some rebar sticking out. They must have planned to do some point when they built this in the 40s or 50s or whenever to do some more brickwork. But we're just gonna go with the fence here, so. Perfect, on to the next side. Okay, so here we are. This is part four of our project. This is the reconstruction process. So I'm using, just so you know what I'm using, I'm using, this is a two by four pressure treated, uh, two by four by eight. I'm gonna use this material to make my frame that's gonna hold all of my cedar, um, planks or cedar fencing boards. They all have to be cut. I'm gonna cut them individually, almost like I'm, you know, I could cut them on my table saw, but I'm gonna cut them individually, just like you're working at home or in the field. And I'm just gonna use a skill saw to do that. And these are basically all the tools you need um, to do it, you know, screw gun, skill saw, so yada, yada, yada. Anyway, you'll figure it out. So gonna cut this up make the frame and use some tapcon screws tapcons to screw it to the brick these tapcons are actually a little bit if you look you'll see they're a little bit short they don't give you much meat so I'm gonna recess them into the or set them into the two by four a little bit with a wider drill bit and just counter sink, counter sink them in about a quarter of an inch or so just to get a little more grab. These are just tap cons I had laying around from a project so I'm gonna reuse them. This I like to cut a little shy because it doesn't need to be crazy tight. And then if you hit any weird spots, you can, it'll fit in there.
There you go. Perfect. Spin. Once again, I'm just going to use this. Uh, this is a, this is a I don't know. What is it? Well, I'll tell you. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Tapcon screw for masonry. Now, I'm just going to go through and do the rest. Perfect. Now I gotta make the side wing pieces of the frame and keep going. let the weight of the saw do the cutting. Weight of the saw. Okay. These are my side pieces. The one thing I forgot to bring with me was a level. Just want to make sure you, when you're doing this, drilling in these tap com bolts, you're going in the, especially if you're going into brick, you're doing it in like the center of the brick because if you hit the grout and the brick, you're just gonna, uh, you're gonna lose it. You're gonna just not have anything to grab onto. Well, that could have been a mistake, but let's see what happens. <laughs>
Just was a little more careful that time. That's super strong. Perfect. Okay, on to the other side. Wow, that was, I should have done that like a half hour ago. Milk crate. <laughs> Best part of the job was the milk crate invention thing. So much easier. Fancy level. Probably don't need a level like that if you're doing this at home. But sometimes it's fun to have cool levels, stuff like that. Don't worry if it does that, because it'll all work out. level to me but it should be yeah it's the wall is super not level all right so next component is going to be the top plate for the frame top plate for the frame coming at you Just an inch. Cut. I have to change bits because we're going to use a different screw. We're just switching back to our regular old construction screws for this component. So, I use a mixture of tools. I use Metabo, Makita, DeWalt, and it's because Usually the tools get stolen from me or I lose them or something weird happens. I mean, this is LA and there happens to be a lot of theft, which totally sucks, but I guess it's the price you pay for sunshine. And here we are. Perfect. Now we have our finished frame and from here on out it's just we're going to start putting on our uh, cedar fence pickets. Here we go. Okay so obviously this side of the fence I did yesterday. I, I recorded it, but I didn't have any audio. That kind of stuff happened. So I'm just gonna match the height of those. I know those are 48 inches. Just wanna make sure I'm gonna be 48 there. So what I'm gonna do is just 
put my level up here. Kind of a, gonna have to do this type of a deal. So I'll just put this guy up here. Get an average height. So the other ones were 48. These are gonna have to be a little bit taller. We're gonna go 48 and a half on these. Yeah, 48 and a half. I'm gonna cut this first one and size it up to make sure. Oh yeah, I wanna cut it from the other end. Just to make sure that it's gonna work here. Blue. 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 Be a good dog. Blue. No. No. Back. 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 Why do we use a square? So you get a nice <clears throat> straight cut with your, your saw. If not, you can have a kooky, crazy edge on your board. Use a square, it's good for you. Now I do like to keep checking as I go to make sure my planks are going on square. If, they, if it starts to kind of, they all kind of tilt this way if you just stack them up or this way. But if you do start to kind of go out of square, you can slightly pull the bottom or the top to the side and eventually over time, you'll be, <clears throat> you'll be square again. So you just kind of want to check as you go.
All right, you can see how there's a little gap up here, but that's just to kind of keep it going level again. There will be gaps. It's not, it's a privacy, privacy fence with some gaps. You know, it's rustic. It'll be all right. Tell your mama won't you fall in love with outlaws, outlaws well, Let me tell you, baby girl, she ain't wrong, no she ain't wrong Yeah, I'm just gonna warn you, I'm the one she's talking about For the past few months, let's just say I've let Well, here I am at the old depot. Got some wood. Gotta get in and get out before it gets crazy. Back from the Home Depot run and about to get the last two pieces on here. Um, I think the last one I may have to rip and I'll show you that. So I'm gonna just cut those up and get those on there. Stat. Alright, that is it. That is my cedar fence replacement. Everything I use today can be purchased at the Home Depot. All standard stuff. Cedar boards, the Tapcon screws, the deck screws from Spax, and the pressure treated lumber. All Home Depot. So Pretty easy job. If you want to replace your fence, two cedar, put it up 20 years. Uh, if you like what you saw, subscribe or don't. It's to you. And uh, we'll see you later. Thanks.